final day of the round of 16 off Belgium and elsewhere, Germany. If we take a look at the lineups, it looks like Belgium are playing a three at the back, five at the back system, uh, with Strunik, Boronal, and Cabasele as your centre half. So um, quite a physical, but uh, not quite experienced backline there. Uh, they're trying to protect Cotuar and goal. Uh, Carrasco and Munier as the wing backs. Witzel and Tielemans manning the midfield. De Bruyne as the left winger. Hazard, Leverkovic in goal. Guardiol and Vyshelko as the fullbacks, Kajataka and Sutalo as the centre halves. Two deep lying midfielders, Luka Modric and Brozovic. The three in front of them are on the ball around nicely, but uh, so far, Croatia remaining composed. Strunic ball through, and De Bruyne has passed into the net. Question as to whether it was offside, it looked okay to me. And just when I was complimenting Croatia on their shape, a centre-half cuts them apart with a uh, pretty straightforward vertical ball. Just wanders upfield, plays it through to De Bruyne. Good touch, and he passes it into the net. 1-0 Belgium. It's messy, but Croatia won't care. They've got their equaliser, and a well-deserved equaliser against Belgium. It is now two goals apiece. And moments later, there's a highlight for Belgium. Carrasco throws the ball into Witzel, who returns the favour. Tielemans forced back Strinzel. And Belgium stroking it around lovely here. They've not been affected by the equaliser a couple of minutes ago. A lot of the ball spending time between the centre halves and looks to. Advance the play, he plays it into Carrasco. Cross there, Lukaku's blazed it over. That's another good chance for Lukaku, and it's still only a draw. Ottawa goes long. Brozovic has options, and he chose Brukal though. Asilic, Modric goes to Vlasalvic, Modric through to Kramaric, it's 3-2 to Croatia. You'd think they deserve it. Don't get me wrong, in the first half Belgium were very clinical with their chances, but Lukaku squandered a few in the second half already. Luka Modric can pass it on a sixpence there. Kramaric just has to beat the goalkeeper really after receiving the ball and he does so with a plum. It's 3-2 to Croatia. <laughs> Belgium have switched up their tactics to match the Croats with a 4-2-3-1, perhaps a more conventional shape. And they've brought on Benaken and Mertens. Clock is running away from Belgium now. We have five minutes to play. And now an extra four of added time. Very well played from Croatia. After taking a lead for 3-2, no more highlights in the game. They shut up for the remaining half an hour. To dump Belgium out of the World Cup at the round of 16 stage, Croatia 3, Belgium. Elsewhere, quite fortunately for myself, a 10 man Argentine side beats Germany by two goals to one. So Denmark have the first highlight of the tournament. Free kick, edge of the box, Christian Eriksen, saved by Ospina.
And Colombia have a highlight here. Barrios, Cuidado. Force back. Davison Sanchez. Cuidado plays the ball through. And it's 1 0 to Colombia. I, I thought there may have been a hint of offside there. So let's see what VAR reckon. No, the goal's given. So Sanchez plays it to Cuidado. That's the ball there to Camp Campas. And cut back to Sinistra. Colombia take the lead. 1 0. Denmark have another highlight. Christian Eriksen delivers the ball to Poulsen. When you're 6 4 against some of these smaller Colombians, you're going to have good opportunities from set pieces. And that's exactly what's just happened. Christian Eriksen with the outswinging ball. Poulsen header into the top corner. Ospina not young enough and spry enough to get into the corner. And with defenders hanging off him, Poulsen scores the goal. Denmark equalise. And they're straight through with another highlight. Damsgaard's ball was cut out by Ospina though, who can slow the pace down a little bit. He goes long. And it looks like Campus is through. Good save by Schmeichel. This has been a spectacular watch for the first game of the tournament. Really the first game not involving Barca that I've watched so far. And it's 2-1! Sinistera crosses the ball into Luis Diaz at the back post. It looks like a lot of the creativity is coming from this right-hand side. Sinistra cross. Yeah, wow. Excellent jump from Luis Diaz. Colombia 2, Denmark 1. Denmark get us started with the highlight here. Eriksen to Hoiberg. Back to the centre-half. Delaney's... Andreas Christensen over the top to Delsgaard. Well, Damsgaard scores. Cuidado appeared to have switched off at that right back position. Kaya played the ball through. Barrios got there. Christensen played a great ball. Enough to entice Cuidado into jumping, but the flight of the path deceived the defender. And Denmark are right back in this. It's 2 2. Hoiberg. Now Eriksen, Poulsen. Cross to the back post. Brun Larsen. I think he was onside. And Denmark have taken the lead. Colombia were the better team in the first half, but we haven't seen a single highlight from them so far in the second. You'd have to say on the balance of things now, Denmark, well deserving of their lead. It's a lovely dinked ball for Poulsen there. Brun Larsen's free. No one tracked his run from deep. Denmark three, Colombia two. Luis Muriel gets us started with a highlight straight from kickoff. Mojica for Luis Diaz. Cuts inside. Mojica puts James in. But it's forced back out. Mojica with a cross to the back post. Morelos to James. It's 3 all. Alfredo Morelos puts the ball back in for... Hammers who broke into the box and thunders it into the net. Colombia 3, Denmark 3. No one really picks up Hammers at all there. Yes, there's a Colombian overload in the box, but that's poor defending from Denmark. Colombia are really under the cosh in the last few minutes here. Braithwaite picks out Brun Larsen on the left. Players flooding into the box in red. Eriksen, edge of the box for Danny Vass. Tom Delaney. Bryn Larson. Eriksen, sweat to the back post. And it's Yusuf Poulsen. 4-3 Denmark. And have they just taken all three points from Colombia here? Excellent play in and around the box. Brun Larsen, it's unlucky for Quadrado not to cut out that ball, and Eriksen just had the presence of mind just to slip it into that danger zone, that corridor of uncertainty, and Poulsen just has to pass it into the net. What a start to the World Cup. It's Denmark 4, Colombia 3. Poulsen is the tournament's top goal scorer, with two goals and an assist to his name. Could Denmark be dark horses for the World Cup?
What I wanted to do for the highlights of the World Cup was kind of dip into a few games here and there. Um, I ended up just watching most of match day one, um, and really a lot of the highlight games were uh, a little bit like international football is in real life, a little bit uneventful. So what I've actually done is I've um, skipped ahead all the way to the end of the group stage, and I figured we'd talk about the... the group stage action a little bit and then um, try and jump ahead in the tournament a little bit because otherwise this episode would be not a fun mini Atari World Cup 2022 episode. It would be a here's an hour and a half documentary on a fictional World Cup. So I figured it'd be more interesting to do it this way. So end of the group stages. Denmark capitalised on their win against Colombia and finished top of the group, with Czech Republic finishing second. Qatar lost all three games, 3-0 to Denmark, 3-0 against Colombia, 8-0 against Denmark, and 3-0 against the Czech Republic. Um, well, if they weren't hosting, they wouldn't have qualified anyway, and the class has really shown in Group A. Group B, Brazil. Top of the group with nine points, three wins from three, winning 3-0 against Mali, 2-1 against Iran, and 4-0 against the United States. The USA finished second in Group B, and one of the games that I kind of regret not recording was one of their wins. It was an 8-3 win against the Mali Empire, who finished bottom of the group. Meanwhile, in Group C, Italy... Another unbeaten campaign, 4-1 against Wales, 1-0 against Uruguay, and 3-0 against Ghana. Uruguay qualified in second place. Switzerland tops the group against Mexico and Portugal. And I think I said in the breakdown at the start of the video, Portugal will probably finish top, but the Switzerland have a good chance to cause an upset. Well, that's exactly what they've done. They've finished top of the group with Mexico second, and Portugal, Cristiano Ronaldo, for probably the final time in international football, has missed out on the knockout stages. A bit of a formality in Group E as England and Spain finished first and second respectively, eliminating Chile and Costa Rica. I've had quite a few reports from the Barca players that have been in the Spain squad. It seems that they're doing a regular starting 11 featuring uh, Mingueza, Pedri, Fati, and I was gonna say Busquets as well, but it looks like he's on the bench for the moment. Uh, they're bringing him off the bench quite a lot, actually. He's played every single game uh, of the save so far. Plowing on, and we have another upset in Group F. France finished top of the group with Algeria second, and Holland, on goal difference, will not be qualifying for the next round. So let's have a look. They beat Japan 5-1, who finished bottom of the group with no points. They drew one all with Algeria and were hammered by France. Five goals to nil. And that's that five-goal swing that's really cost them a place in the next round. Algeria, second place. In Group G, Croatia and Argentina, uh, identical records. Uh, Croatia had one better goal difference. And that came proxy of, well, two 2-0 two wins. Argentina could only beat Morocco by one. And that is that. Argentina were a little bit poor. And in one of the games that I'm not sure I'll, I've already included or not, um, they played Messi in a 4-5-1, quite deep, quite flat. So Messi was like a right midfielder, playing quite deep, and he tracked back quite a lot to cover from the right back Juan Foyth, which was very interesting to see. So when you see that they've only scored three, four goals in three games, that's kind of why they're just playing uh, Lataro Martinez um, or Paolo Dybala up top on their own with no support from Messi or Di Maria or Paredes, any of the, of the creative midfield players that they have. And, uh, and it's cost them second place in the group. Group H, Germany, Belgium. Unfortunately, and this is an oversight from my perspective, before the save started, I didn't fix the licensing for the German national team. So I'm really hoping they don't go too far in the tournament because that would be... A bit of a spoiler, really. So, how does this all shape up for the knockout stage? Denmark play the United States, and I think I will be interested in watching that for Serginio Dest. Elsewhere, the Czech Republic play Brazil. Uruguay play Switzerland. Italy-Mexico could be an interesting game to watch. We might attend that one. 
Algeria, England. Well, if England don't qualify, then there's no point in watching them. Uh, Algeria were fortunate to finish above Holland on goal difference in their group, but really England on FM should sweep them aside. This is probably the game of the round. Spain, France. We have four Barcelona players for Spain and two for France, so we'll definitely be attending that game. Don't know who will be cheering on. I mean, we're a Spanish manager managing a Spanish team, but we really like Badashile and Griezmann as well for France. So I think we've got to lean Spain, but it's not the end of the world if France go through instead. Rounding out the knockout stages, Croatia-Belgium is the game we're going to focus on, and we're going to pray that Argentina beat Germany because of the license fix. So with the first round of the knockout stages, moments from kickoff, Denmark will play the United States. Let's just have a look at the lineups. So Ginio Dest is playing, he's a little bit tired, but they're playing him at a left wing back with Pulisic as the right wing back. Still got Bradley in their lineup. How old is he now? 35 years old. Manning the midfield alongside his young deputy Weston McKenney. Uh, Borussia Dortmund's Reina is going to be playing that number 10 role with Balogun from Arsenal up top. Carter Vickers, he was on loan tips with Town. Wasn't very good for us. He was a bit of a beast on Football Manager. Jacques Stefan in goal. This is not a bad side. I mean, who's this guy? He plays for Tenerife. And he may be going to Belgium. He's playing up front for the Americans. Not the strongest squad you've ever seen, but it's not too bad. Denmark have pretty much an unchanged side. They've got Schmeichel, Skov, Nielsen, Kaya and Vass, who's normally a centre mid, but can play right wing back. Uh, compact and solid defensive midfielders, uh, Delaney and Hoiberg. And up front, they have Lindstorm, Brun Larsen, Braithwaite, with Dolberg leading the line. Back to Bradley. I think he's playing like a deep lying playmaker role. Reyna tries to play it to Balagan. Shashoa through to Reyna and America. Take the lead. One goal to nil. Despite being a young player, Reyna did not panic. When he got into the final third there, he stayed composed. He didn't fire the shot immediately. Lovely played through ball from Shashoa. Reina took a touch, Schmeichel dives, and he taps it into an open net. 1-0 to the United States. It's going to be a corner here for Denmark in the 43rd minute. Lindstrom with the outswinger. Into the middle, Delaney's hit the bar, Kaya's hit the bar. And Nilsson headers the ball into Stefan's hands. A bit of a let-off for the United States. Ten to go, it looks like the United States are shutting up shop. But as soon as I say that, there's a highlight. Denmark, and Kaya... Plays it into the feet of Billing. Kenny pressures him, so Vestergaard collects the ball. Skov to Lindstrom, who's out on this left flank now. As Eriksson's the number 10, he plays it through to Braithwaite. The goalkeeper's made an absolute mess of that. But it's chalked off for offside. I thought Martin Braithwaite had scored there. And that's all she wrote. Denmark nil, United States won. Quite a conservative and uneventful game, in all honesty, but that's tournament football. The United States have done the job. They took their chance. I thought in the dying minutes of the game, Denmark had equalised, but uh, Braithwaite was chalked off for offside. And the United States will be going through to the next round. Will they win the tournament playing like that? I'm tempted to say no, but they're the first team into the quarterfinals, so maybe? Elsewhere in the round of 16, and quite predictably, Brazil cruise past the Czech Republic, winning three goals to one, courtesy of Neymar. Martinelli and Thiago Silva's 97th minute goal. The round of 16 continues in match day two with Uruguay through to the quarterfinals with an extra time Edison Cavani goal to deliver the knockout blow to a 10-man Switzerland. I mean, in all honesty, Switzerland did okay to hold out for half an hour against uh, a strong Uruguay side, but today's feature match is Italy versus Mexico. As we look at the sides, they appear to be playing a comparable shape, a 4-3-3 uh, with a defensive midfielder. The Italian side looks quite strong with Donnarumma in goals, Benazzola and Calabria at fullback, a Sherby and Benucci centre-halves with Chris Dante in the hole. Barea and Verratti look to move the ball forwards into the front three of Florenzi, Chiesa and Immobile. 
Mexico, same shape, it's mostly the same players. They have Ochoa in goal with Calderon and Sanchez at fullback, Carayo and Alvarez at centre half, Andreas Guardado at holding midfield. Atletico Madrid's Herrera is partnered with Gutierrez in the centre of the park with Herving Lozano on the right, Alvarado on the left with Raul Jimenez up top. Calabria to Florenzi. It's interesting to have two right wing backs on this right channel. Calabria's overlap. Immobile is 1 0. Lovely overlapping run from the full back. Florenzi dropped into a uh, almost an inverted winger role on the uh, centre of right channel to allow the overlapping run. Uh, left full back could have done better. He was completely unaware there. Arayo couldn't get the ball clear. And Immobile taps in. Italy 1, Mexico nil. Cuadrado sends the ball in. Cleared away by Cristante, but... Referee stopped the play. Is this a penalty? It's being checked. And a penalty's been awarded. Not sure I saw anything wrong there, but... Uh, Jimenez steps up and saved by Donnarumma. <laughs> He's, he's such a good one-on-one -on -one penalty expert. I mean, that's almost six and a half feet. He does cover a lot of the goal. So it's difficult to get it past him, but he seems to always go the right way in real life and, and on FM. I like continues with Lozano on this left channel. Alvarado, back to Lozano. Cross goes in. Jimenez couldn't get there, and the ball's cleared by Spinazzola and out of play. Moments before the halftime break, we have another highlight. Immobile. Cristante Chiesa is their free ball. Dribbling, slalling and run. Shot with the right foot goes over the goal. For Italy 1, Mexico 0 at half time. Italy have a free kick. And wow. <laughs> Verratti's cross as Sherby heads it down. Immobile volleys it from the edge of the box. And that could be the Italians through to the quarters. Sanchez completely bodied by a Sherby. Goalkeeper may have done better, Ochoa there. But Immobile just thundered the ball with such pace on the half volley. Verratti has a corner, the 91st. Cleared away with considerable ease by the Mexicans, but the ball's back with Florenzi from range. Virginio recycled the play in that reduced a roll, and Florenzi can hit them, and he did. Ball sailed past Ochoa. He's beaten quite easily today. Jorginho, first time ball. Florenzi just turns, gets the ball out of his body. I mean, that's, that's thundered in with such pace. I don't think you can blame the goalkeeper for that. And just when you think the Italians are going to see the game out, we have another highlight. Di Lorenzo to Cristante, Benucci. Maybe this is just the end game highlight now. A Cherubi. Bonucci, no real press from the Mexicans. They know it's all over. Lorenzi throws this right winger. Immobile cut across for Jorginho and it's four. A completely unnecessary fourth goal and um, maybe lacking a bit of sportsmanship, but that's, that's the sort of attitude you need to go deep in these international tournaments and the Italians definitely have that. Bonucci played the ball high to the right to Florenzi. He cuts back for Immobile. Jorginho, in buckets of space, just passes it into the top corner, really. Italy 4, Mexico 0. And that will bring about the final whistle. An utterly dominant display. Mexico had a chance to equalise with a Raul Jimenez penalty. Unfortunately, Donnarumma is a penalty specialist. And uh, the scoreline had a bit of gloss applied to it in the 91st and 93rd minute with two late goals. However... Italy were thoroughly the best side and will be going through to the quarterfinals. Plowing on with the round of 16, we have a very interesting game, which um, a game worthy of the final, really, with the reputation of the two sides. It's Spain versus France. Both teams playing the tournament favourite 4 3 3 with a holding midfielder. Spain have Simon in goal with Gaia and Porto as the fullbacks, Torres and Mingueza as the centre halves, Lorente in holding mid with Pedri and Koke manning the midfield, and the front three of Oyazabal, Fati and Alvaro Morata. 
France mirror the formation of Spain with Mangian in goal, Lamar as a left back, Pavard right back, Badashile centre half, along with captain Rafa Varane. Kante plays the holding mid position, no Paul Pogba as Fakir and Rabio man the midfield, Griezmann on the right, and Bappe on the left, and leading the line, Karim Benzema. Early highlight here is the French keeper gets the ball out of feet and looks for Rabio. Ball won by Paul Torres, but recovered by Griezmann. That's inside to a deep Benzema who puts Mbappe through on this left channel. Cross back post. Griezmann has shot is blocked. Kante has a shot from the edge of the box, but that was never going on target. <laughs> Torres and Koke. Pedri, can he find the ball? Or Isabel, Morata, and it's 1 0 to Spain. Beautiful vertical tiki taka from the Spanish side. And I'm going to say, with two Barcelona players in the build up, of Mingueza and Pedri, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say that's down to us, down to the Barca style of play. No, but it's a really nice ball from Oyazabal. Perfect weight in for Morata, who just passes it past the goalkeeper into the back of the net. Have a second highlight. Following soon thereafter, Poto gets the ball in. Header from Oyazabal, who rose high but couldn't keep the ball low. Jose Gaia's corner. Cross comes in and bundled in at the back post by Oyazabal. But the referee's questioning something. Is it an offside? It's going to go to VAR. And the goal stands. Jose Gaia's ball goes in. Lorente, header, patted away by Mangian, and Oyazabal taps it in at the back post. Spain 2, France 0. Another highlight, and it's all Spain so far. Al Torres. But the ball's intercepted by Antoine Griezmann. Rabio. Can he play it to the fullback? Pavard to Griezmann. He has options in the middle. Checks back to Pavard from range, and it's over the bar. It's all Spain. Another free kick from Gaia. Morata heads it in. It's three. I think before the match, we were leaning towards Spain. I mean, with the Barcelona production line of Ingueza and Pedri. Batty as well. Uh, Sergio Bisquets to make four. Um, it would be lovely to see them pick up some international silverware. And I think as a contest, this ties over. It's a shame to see Griezmann and Badashile turfed out of the competition so early. I'll break away here to say that Benzema's broken through. Unai Simon was up to the task to save a well-struck shot. Fikir. Crossed into Varane, but it's cleared away by Pal Torres. Mbappe tackled by Koke. France just can't get anything going here today. Spain, can they launch a counter attack? Pedri is the furthest forward for the Spaniards. And Sufati beats a man. It's him versus Lamar, so I know who's going to win. It was actually Lamar, so maybe I don't know. <laughs> Spain corner. Gaia produced some lovely balls so far today, but it's cleared by Varane. Rikio with the corner. Tries to find a man. It's Kunde, the back post. Is there hope for France? I'm going to say no. <laughs> if they would have scored maybe 10 or 15 minutes ago, there may have been hope. It's a good delivery from Fakir, and I'm not too sure who's that in a Spain shirt that fails to meet his, meet his man there. He will remain nameless. Sergio Busquets has been brought on just to stem the tide of blue shirts and try to break up the game a little bit. So that's Spain all but qualified now with Busquets on in that holding mid role. As Pavard progresses past Moreno, Benzema has space in the box back post. Komen is 3 2 to France, uh, 3 2 to Spain. Is there another highlight in the last five minutes of stoppage time? Yes, there is. Lamar. All to Fakir. Who's hacked down by Pedro Pardo. Spain are down to 10. Three minutes to play and probably some extra time after that now. Can France make anything of their one-man advantage? 30 seconds to go. Komen. Pogba. Rabiot tackled by Fabian, but Badashile recovers. Rabiot. Komen tackled by Mingueza. Shot from Komen! And it's 3-all. 
Wow. So, the French manager, Didier Deschamps, obviously knows better than I. Substituting Mbappe off at 3-0 down, Kingsley Coman has created two goals in the last 10 minutes of the game to send this tie, presumably, into extra time. We do have another highlight in the 97th minute. Pavar advancing forwards from that right fullback position. Cross comes in. Fakir tried to dink it past Simon, and it's cleared by Mingueza. So here we go. Extra time in a game which looked to be all but over at the half in the space of 12 minutes. Well, the space of 17 minutes. France have clawed back for a three-all tie. And now we have half an hour of football of 11 men of France versus 10 men of Spain. Bundé, Pogba. Coman's there, man of the match so far. Blasts it in and cleared away. Fakir, and it's cleared away again by Busquets. Spain hanging on. Looks like there's going to be a free kick here for Spain just before the half time of extra time. I'll say Gaia, and he scored. Left-footed free kick from roughly 21 yards. I believe he curved the ball around the wall. And the French keeper was left stranded. Spain may steal this. It's 4-3. Excellent job from Spain. No highlights in the second period of extra time. And Spain will qualify for the quarterfinals, winning 4-3 against France. Elsewhere, and uh, quite predictably, England cruise past Algeria. Four goals to one, a Tammy Abraham hat-trick, the main difference. Final day of the round of 16, our focus match will be Croatia, Belgium, and elsewhere, Germany take on Argentina. If we take a look at the lineups, it looks like Belgium are playing a three at the back, five at the back system, uh, with Strunik, Baronal, and Cabasele as your centre-half, so... Um, Quite physical, but uh, not quite experienced backline there. Uh, they're trying to protect Cotuar and goal. Uh, Carrasco and Munier as the wing backs. Witzel and Tielemans manning the midfield. De Bruyne as the left winger. Hazard as the right winger. And I think that'd be Thorgan Hazard, you would think. Yep, Thorgan Hazard as the right winger. With Romilu Lukaku up top. Croatia with a bit more of a conventional shape a 4 2 3 1. Leverkovic in goal. Guardiol and Vyshelko as the fullbacks, Kajatakar and Sutalo. Playing for Atalanta, I'm not sure I've heard of Sutalo. As the centre halves. The two deep lying midfielders, Luka Modric and Brozovic. The three in front of them are Rebic on the left, Procaldo on the right, and Vlasic as the number 10, with Kramaric leading the line. Near and Tielemans. Belgium stroking the ball around nicely, but uh, so far, Croatia remaining composed. Strinic ball through, and De Bruyne has passed into the net. Question as to whether it was offside, it looked okay to me. And just when I was complimenting Croatia on their shape, a centre half cuts them apart with a uh, pretty straightforward vertical ball. Just wanders upfield, plays it through to De Bruyne. Good touch, and he passes it into the net. 1-0 Belgium. Vlasic and Vardiol play a 1-2. Ball up top to Kramer, and he's hit the crossbar. Courtois was completely beaten there, and Croatia had a valuable chance to go one all. Rebic. Recycles to Vardiol. Edge of the box, Brozovic. Right channel to Vyshalko. Edge of the box. Brozovic has time and space. He hits it. Saved by Kotwa. And again, shot from Brozovic and it's turned in by Nikola Vlasic. Croatia have their equaliser. Oh, Belgium couldn't just... They couldn't get the ball away. So the ball was uh, struck well from Brozovic. Blocked by the centre-half, actually. Bricaldo recycles. Another shot from Brozovic. It looked like it was going wide, but Vlasic helps it into the net. De Bruyne to take the throw. Carrasco. He's given away possession to Vlasic, but recovers, makes up for his mistake, and he's through the middle of the park now. Lukaku, Tielemans, Torgan Hazard. Tielemans goes over the top two. Kevin De Bruyne. Does he have an option? 
Cuts back for Carrasco, cleared by Cayeta Carr. Strudic coming forwards again. The Tielemans now. Space on the right hand side with Munier. Takes Guardiola on before delivering the cross. Lukaku cuts back to Thorgan Hazard, who plays the ball across to De Bruyne, who has an open goal. He taps it in. Two goals for De Bruyne. Two goals for Belgium. It is now 2 1 to Belgium against Croatia here. Munier got some separation from Vardiol to play it into Lukaku. It's a lovely worked goal as Hazard could have had the shot on his left foot, but he saw the run from De Bruyne and De Bruyne passes it in. I don't fancy Lukaku on those chipped balls. I'd much rather see him blast a shot there. Croatia are coming forward now with Bricaldo on the right channel. Cross delivered in but cleared away. And Torgan Hazard can come away for Belgium. Pinched by Modric. Pieta Carr. Zatalo. Brozovic goes through to Kramaric. Saved by Kotswar, but it's off the post and in. And there's also a question as to whether it's offside. Goal checked. Goal awarded. Zatalo plays the ball into the feet of Brozovic, who turns, he sees the run for Kramaric, who's definitely onside. Shot patted away by Kotoir, off the post and in. It's messy, but Croatia won't care. They've got their equaliser, and a well-deserved equaliser against Belgium. It is now two goals apiece. Brozovic has options, and he chose Brokaldo. Hasilic, Modric goes to Vlaselko. They're stroking the ball around nicely now, and... Uh, Belgium are the uh, tighter of the two teams. Modric through to Kramaric. It's 3-2 to Croatia. And on the balance of play, you'd think they deserve it. Don't get me wrong. In the first half, Belgium were very clinical with their chances, but Lukaku squandered a few in the second half already. Luka Modric. And pass it on a sixpence there. Kramaric. Just has to beat the goalkeeper, really, after receiving the ball, and he does so with a plum. It's 3-2 to Croatia. Very well played from Croatia. After taking the lead for 3-2, no more highlights in the game. They shut up shop and defended well for the remaining half an hour. To dump Belgium out of the World Cup at the round of 16 stage, Croatia 3, Belgium 2. Elsewhere, quite fortunately for myself, a 10-man Argentine side beats Germany by two goals to one. And I think that will do it for this episode. The end of the round of 16 is quite a nice place to take a breath, take a pause. I think this video is getting onto the 40 minute mark now. So this will be part one of the little break from our Barcelona series for the World Cup. Join us next time for the quarters, semis and the all important final of the World Cup. My name has been Nerdy Lover. Thank you very much for watching and have a lovely day.